The Philippines faces an average of 20 typhoons every year, and about eight to nine of them make direct landfall. It sits on top of multiple active fault lines capable of producing magnitude nine earthquakes. It's surrounded by six major underwater trenches that can trigger massive tsunamis. And it has 24 active volcanoes that could erupt at any time. No other country on Earth faces this combination of threats. Why? Because of where the Philippines sits on the map and what lies beneath the ocean surrounding it. Today, we're going to explain why the Philippines is surrounded by disaster and why this small archipelago faces more natural disasters than almost anywhere else on Earth. Look at a map of the Philippines. It's an archipelago of 7,641 islands scattered across the Western Pacific Ocean. Beautiful, tropical, and positioned in the worst possible location for natural disasters. The Philippines sits at the intersection of four major tectonic plates, the Eurasian Plate, the Philippine Sea Plate, the Sunda Plate, and the Pacific Plate. When tectonic plates meet, they either collide, slide past each other, or one dives beneath the other. And all three of these processes are happening simultaneously around the Philippines. This creates a ring of subduction zones, underwater trenches where one tectonic plate is being forced beneath another. And subduction zones are the most dangerous geological features on Earth. They produce the largest earthquakes. They trigger the most devastating tsunamis. And they create chains of explosive volcanoes. The Philippines is surrounded by them. To understand why the Philippines faces so many disasters, you need to understand these trenches. Because each one represents a different threat. The Manila Trench runs along the western coast of Luzon, about 100 kilometers offshore. This is where the Sunda Plate is being pushed beneath the Philippine Sea Plate at a rate of about 8 centimeters per year. The trench is 5,400 meters deep at its lowest point, and the fault interface where the two plates meet, sits 20 to 40 kilometers beneath the seafloor. This fault is capable of producing magnitude eight to nine megathrust earthquakes. And when it ruptures, the sudden vertical displacement of the seafloor will generate a massive tsunami that could strike Metro Manila in 15 to 30 minutes. 13 million people live in the potential impact zone, and most have no idea this threat exists. The Philippine Trench runs along the eastern coast of the Philippines, from Luzon down through the Visayas and Mindanao. It's one of the deepest oceanic trenches on Earth, reaching 10,540 meters at its deepest point, deeper than Mount Everest is tall. This is where the Philippine Sea Plate is subducting beneath the Eurasian Plate. And the scale of this subduction zone is enormous. The fault stretches for over 1,300 kilometers. A full rupture of the Philippine Trench could produce a magnitude 9 or greater earthquake, similar to the 2011 Japan earthquake that killed 18,000 people and triggered a 40-meter tsunami. If this happens, the eastern coasts of Luzon, the Visayas, and Mindanao would face catastrophic tsunami waves within 20 to 40 minutes. The Cotabato Trench sits off the southern coast of Mindanao. This is where the Sunda Plate subducts beneath the Philippine Sea Plate in a complex fault system. The trench is capable of producing magnitude 8 to 8.5 earthquakes. And because it's close to densely populated areas like Davao, General Santos, and Cotabato City, the impact of a major rupture would be devastating. In 1976, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake on a fault near the Cotabato Trench triggered a tsunami that killed over 5,000 people in the Moro Gulf region. It remains one of the deadliest tsunami events in Philippine history. The threat still exists today. The East Luzon Trench, the Negros Trench, and the Sulu Trench complete the ring of subduction zones surrounding the Philippines. Each represents a different segment of the complex tectonic boundary system. Together, these six trenches form a nearly complete circle around the Philippine archipelago. The Philippines is literally surrounded by fault zones capable of producing megathrust earthquakes and tsunamis. And because these trenches are offshore and underwater, most Filipinos don't even know they exist. But the oceanic threats don't stop at earthquakes and tsunamis. The Philippines also sits directly in the path of the most active tropical cyclone basin on Earth. The Western Pacific Ocean generates more typhoons than any other region. On average, 
20 to 25 tropical cyclones form in this area each year. And the Philippines is positioned directly in their path. Here's why. Typhoons form over warm ocean water, at least 26.5 degrees Celsius. The Western Pacific off the coast of the Philippines stays warm year-round, providing the energy needed for typhoon development. As these storms move westward, carried by trade winds and atmospheric steering currents, they pass directly over or near the Philippine Islands. Some curve north toward Taiwan and Japan, others weaken over land. But on average, eight to nine typhoons make direct landfall in the Philippines every year. Of those, five to six are strong typhoons, category three or higher, with sustained winds exceeding 178 kilometers per hour. And every few years, a super typhoon strikes with catastrophic force. Typhoon Haiyan in 2013 was one of the strongest tropical cyclones ever recorded. It made landfall in the eastern Visayas with sustained winds of 315 kilometers per hour and storm surge reaching seven meters high. The city of Tacloban was devastated. Over 6,300 people died. And Haiyan wasn't an anomaly. The Philippines has been struck by multiple Category 5 equivalent super typhoons in recent decades. Typhoon Uring in 1991, Typhoon Yolanda in 2013, Typhoon Rai in 2021. The frequency and intensity of these storms are increasing due to climate change. Warmer ocean temperatures mean more energy available for typhoon intensification. And the Philippines, positioned in Typhoon Alley, bears the brunt of this trend. The subduction zones that create the trenches also create volcanoes. As the oceanic plate dives into the mantle, it melts. That magma rises through cracks in the overlying plate and erupts at the surface. The result? A chain of volcanoes running the length of the Philippines. The Philippine archipelago is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the belt of volcanic and seismic activity that encircles the Pacific Ocean. The Philippines has 24 active volcanoes. Some, like Mayon, erupt regularly. Others, like Taal and Pinatubo, remain dormant for decades or centuries before producing catastrophic eruptions. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted in one of the largest volcanic eruptions of the 20th century. The eruption killed over 800 people, displaced hundreds of thousands, and ejected so much ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere that it temporarily cooled the entire planet. Tal Volcano, just 60 kilometers south of Metro Manila, erupted in 2020 after 43 years of dormancy. Hundreds of thousands of people were evacuated, and the eruption reminded Filipinos that even sleeping volcanoes can wake up with little warning. Mayon Volcano in Albay Province erupts almost every decade. Its perfect cone shape is the result of centuries of regular eruptions. But that beauty comes with danger. Mayon's eruptions have killed thousands over the centuries, and the threat continues today. With 24 active volcanoes, the Philippines faces the constant possibility of explosive eruptions, pyroclastic flows, ashfall, and volcanic mud flows called lahars. So the Philippines faces earthquakes from multiple fault lines and subduction zones, tsunamis from underwater megathrust ruptures, volcanic eruptions from 24 active volcanoes, eight to nine typhoon landfalls per year, with five to six being strong typhoons, storm surge and coastal flooding amplified by low-lying geography, and landslides triggered by heavy rain, earthquakes, and volcanic activity. No other country on Earth faces this exact combination of threats. Japan has earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons, but it faces fewer typhoon landfalls, typically two to three per year, and they're generally less intense by the time they reach Japan. Japan also has better infrastructure and early warning systems built over decades. Indonesia has earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. It's part of the ring of fire, just like the Philippines. But Indonesia rarely experiences direct typhoon strikes. Most tropical cyclones in the region curve north toward the Philippines. The Caribbean and Central America face hurricanes, but the Atlantic Basin produces fewer landfalling storms than what the Philippines experiences. And these regions don't sit on the same density of active subduction zones and fault lines. The Philippines gets everything. Eight to nine typhoon landfalls per year, plus magnitude nine earthquake potential, plus 24 active volcanoes, plus six major tsunami generating trenches. No other country faces this combination of frequency and intensity. 
Despite all of this, 110 million people live in the Philippines, and they've developed remarkable resilience. Filipino culture has evolved around disaster preparedness. Families know evacuation procedures. Communities rebuild quickly after disasters. Barangays organize disaster response drills. Everyone knows what to do when a typhoon warning is issued or when the ground starts shaking. The Filipino spirit of Bayanihan, communal unity and cooperation, is never stronger than in the aftermath of disasters. Neighbors help neighbors. Communities come together. The nation rebuilds. But resilience and preparation can only go so far when you're surrounded by disaster on all sides. When the ocean to the west can generate magnitude 9 earthquakes. When the ocean to the east can do the same. When 8 to 9 typhoons make landfall every year. When 24 volcanoes sit waiting to erupt. The Philippines didn't choose this geography. But it's the geography Filipinos must live with. The Philippines is surrounded by disaster because of forces millions of years in the making. Four tectonic plates colliding at the intersection of the Pacific and Eurasian landmasses. Six major subduction zones encircling the archipelago, the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean feeding a typhoon factory, and the volcanic chain of the Ring of Fire running through the heart of the islands. It's a perfect storm of geological and meteorological threats, and there's no escape. But understanding why these threats exist is the first step to surviving them. Knowing that the Manila Trench sits 100 kilometers offshore. Knowing that typhoons form over warm Pacific water and move west. Knowing that volcanoes erupt because of subduction-driven magma. Knowledge doesn't stop earthquakes. It doesn't prevent typhoons, but it saves lives. If you want to learn more about the specific threats facing the Philippines and how to prepare for them, subscribe to this channel. We cover the Manila Trench, the Philippine Trench, tsunami survival, typhoon preparedness, and the geological forces shaping this nation. Because when you live in the Philippines, understanding what's beneath the depths and what's approaching from the ocean could be the difference between life and death. The Philippines is surrounded by disaster, but Filipinos are surrounded by knowledge, resilience, and each other. And that might be enough.